Hi everyone and welcome to Miss Estrick Biology. In this video I'm going to be going through everything you need to know for topic 9 gas exchange for Cambridge International A Level. So this is your perfect video for revision or even for learning it for the first time if you happen to miss a lesson or maybe you are self-teaching it. And if you do need any more help and revision resources then check the link below because I've got a whole range of things there that are going to help you to get the grades that you need. But for now let's get into gas exchange. CIE topic 9 and in this one we're going through gas exchange. So the mammalian gas exchange system then, you need to know the key structures, the trachea or trachea, bronchi, bronchioles and the alveoli. And the route that air takes during ventilation is, it will be inhaled through the nasal cavity or mouth, then it passes down the trachea, which is the windpipe. It then is split between these two tubes, which are the bronchi. It then branches into multiple smaller tubes, which are the bronchioles. And then we get to these air sacs at the end, which are the alveoli. So let's have a look at these structures in more detail. Now you could be asked to identify these structures on a photomicrograph, on an electron micrograph. So we're going to go through these structures, what their function is. But first, I'm just going to talk you through what to look for to be able to identify them. So for the trachea, you're looking for a large tubular structure, which is lined with ciliated epithelium, which you might be able to see on an electron micrograph. So those hair like structures coming out of the cells. You may also see goblet cells, which are interspersed amongst epithelial cells, which would be this big, almost like um, indent into the cell where you have mucus being produced. The tracheal wall should contain cartilage as well. And you get these C shaped rings of cartilage. The bronchi are similar to the trachea, but smaller diameter. So the bronchi are also lined with ciliated epithelium. They contain these cartilaginous plates instead of complete rings. And the plates may appear as irregular shaped segments along the bronchial wall. The bronchioles are smaller, less structured airways compared to the trachea and bronchi. The bronchioles are lined with simple ciliated epithelium without the presence of cartilage. You have smooth muscle fibres which may be visible in the bronchiolar wall, appearing as irregular bands or layers. Now the alveoli, there's lots of round structures with an airspace in the middle and they've got very, very thin walls. They're only one cell thick. So if we go through these structures in more detail than just what they would look like on a microscope. So we're starting with the trachea, which is the air pipe or windpipe. And you have these C-shaped rings of cartilage, which is what you can see here in this beige colour. And that cartilage provides structural support so that the airway is constantly open and it doesn't get flattened or stuck together. And it's C-shaped rather than the whole way round because your esophagus would be here and you don't want that hard cartilage against the esophagus because as the esophagus is contracting and relaxing with peristalsis, that could be interfered by that cartilage. You also have ciliated epithelium with goblet cells. The cilia, those hair-like structures, are there to sweep mucus up and out of the lungs to prevent infection of the lungs. And then it's the goblet cells that produce that mucus. So goblet cells' upper section swells with mucin droplets. Mucus comprises mucin, and it's this viscous solution of glycoproteins with multiple carbohydrate chains, making it really sticky and capable of trapping inhaled particles, which could be dust or it could be pathogens. Mucus glands beneath the epithelium produce the mucus. Certain chemical pollutants like sulfur dioxide and nitrogen dioxide can dissolve a mucus, creating an acidic solution that irritates the airway lining. So that's not a good thing. Smooth muscles is within the walls of the trachea. So smooth muscles are within the walls of the trachea. The muscle contracts if there are harmful substances detected in the airway. And this results in the lumen of the trachea constricting and reducing airflow to the lungs as a way to try and protect the lungs. When the smooth muscle relaxes, the lumen dilates. This stretch and recoil of the lumen is possible due to the elastic fibres within the tracheal wall. Next in the bronchi and the bronchioles, the trachea splits into two tubes, the bronchi. So you have a left and a right one, and that leads to the left lung and the right lung. And those bronchi split into the bronchioles, which are these smaller tubes. 
and both the bronchi and the bronchioles have cartilage within their walls for structural support to keep the tubes open. Now you will have noticed in that previous slide we said that the bronchioles don't have cartilage. They will have cartilage at the very top parts, but as they branch further and further, those smaller tubules in the bronchioles don't have cartilage. Then the bronchioles end at the alveoli, which are these air sacs, and they're located at the ends. It's the site of gas exchange. Oxygen diffuses from the alveoli, where you have a high concentration of oxygen or partial pressure, into the blood, where there is this lower partial pressure of oxygen. And carbon dioxide does the opposite. It's also moving down its concentration gradients. The blood that is entering the capillaries at this point is a high concentration of carbon dioxide, so it diffuses from the blood into the alveoli, where it will be exhaled. So in terms of adaptations then, first of all, the fact that there are so many alveoli in both lungs is what provides a large surface area. One individual alveoli doesn't produce a large surface area. It's the fact that there are millions in both lungs. The short diffusion distance, though, that is created by the fact that the alveoli wall is made up of just one thin layer of cells. And those thin layer are called squamous epithelial cells, which I love that word. Squamous is such a cool word. Basically, it's like the idea it's squashed. It's a squashed flat cell and that reduces the diffusion distance. Also the endothelium of the capillary is just one layer of cells as well so you've got a very short diffusion distance. The gases only have to diffuse through two cells which are both flat. The maintainer of the concentration gradient that's done through ventilation but also the fact that the blood is constantly being transported away so as soon as the oxygen diffuses into the blood it's being transported away. So a bit more then about this gas exchange in the alveoli. We've said that oxygen is inhaled into the alveoli and diffuses across the layers of those two um, structures. But we haven't said yet that the fact that the moist lining of the alveoli is there. So you have this moist layer on that layer of cells and that's so the gases can dissolve in that liquid and then they diffuse across that way. We did talk about that single layer of cells, which is squamous epithelial cells. They're flat. They've got that really short diffusion distance. The oxygen then diffuses through the endothelial cells lining the capillaries. Simultaneously, carbon dioxide, which is the waste product of respiration or aerobic respiration, diffuses from the blood in the pulmonary capillaries into the alveoli. And carbon dioxide diffuses in the opposite direction of the oxygen moving in. The efficiency of gas exchange is due to those three factors that we talked about. The large surface area because there's so many alveoli, the short diffusion distance because of these squamous epithelial cells and the fact that both the alveoli wall and the capillary endothelium is only made up of one single layer of cells and the concentration gradient is maintained by ventilation and that blood flow in the capillaries. Next, then you need to know about the distribution of tissue and cells in the gas exchange system. We've talked about this throughout, but we've got a summary here for you. So you can just create a summary sheet of information. So the cartilage is distributed in the walls of the trachea and those larger bronchi, providing structural support so that it doesn't collapse, those tubes don't flatten and collapse. The ciliated epithelium that's in your nasal cavity trachea and bronchi and it's to move the mucus to sweep that mucus up and out of the lungs. Goblet cells you have lots of them in the respiratory epithelium secreting mucus to trap and remove inhaled particles. The walls of the alveoli we said consist of a single layer of squamous epithelial cells and that allows for the efficient gas exchange between the alveoli and the capillaries. Smooth muscle is found in the bronchioles and that helps to regulate airflow by controlling the diameter of the airways. And the capillaries form a dense network surrounding the alveoli and the lungs, which helps to facilitate rapid gas exchange because it maintains that concentration gradient. So that is it for gas exchange. Make sure you do hit the subscribe button and like and you won't miss out on any of the videos I'm doing if you hit subscribe. And I do a new one at the moment. I'm aiming to do one every week. I might try and get them out faster so you've got them before your summer exams.